Hello all, this is Nori from My Service Depot. Today we're taking a look at the Service Agreement module for Smart Service and how this additional feature can help improve your workflow. The Service Agreement module is available for purchase through the Help Desk or your Sales Representative. Once you've obtained the module, we'll take a look at the settings for this module and a brief overview of how it works. Before we get started, let's discuss how this module works for your business. The Service Agreement module is designed to help you invoice and track Service Agreement payment and expiration dates. We'll still use the job functions available in the base package of Smart Service to coordinate and distribute preventative maintenance visits. But we'll also attach those jobs to the Service Agreement module for some additional tracking. We recommend that you gather any documentation about your current agreements as you will have the option to add ongoing agreements to the program momentarily. If this will be your business's first time working with Service Agreement contracts, we recommend you take a look at what other similar businesses in your area are offering and the options available to your customers. Before we can use the module, we need to set things up. Let's head over to the settings screen and take a look at the initial options before we get to entering the contracts. In settings, click on the new Service Agreement tab here. If you don't see this option, please call the help desk so we can activate the module for you. Inside this tab, you have the option to rename your service agreements to your preferred terminology here. You should also take some time to paste in or type in some terms and conditions for your contracts in these boxes. Now that everything is ready to go, open one of the customers who has a contract with you. You'll notice the customers and locations have a new tab named after your maintenance contracts. Enter this tab and click the Add New Service Agreement option. In this window, you'll need to specify a name and type for your maintenance contract. These are text options that you can use in any way that you would like. If you're looking for ideas, we recommend using the name for the contract name or the level of contract and the type for either the contract term or the equipment the agreement is for. There are other optional options below. You can specify a salesperson, a price level, which if used will affect the customer record, not just the contracted services, an early renewal discount, or a PO, which would be referenced when invoicing this customer. Continuing to the right, you can choose whether this contract is currently active, has been canceled, or is currently expired. Afterwards, enter the original contract date, which will be when the customer first obtained this contract with you. This will default to the current date if no date is selected. If this contract has been renewed before, choose the last renewed date here, otherwise leave the section blank. If your contract has an expiration date, you can enter that information in the expiration date field. However, not all contracts expire and require renewal. If this is the case for you, remove the expiration date and leave it blank. If the equipment covered by this contract has a warranty date you'd like to track, you can record that date here or on the equipment itself. You'll notice at the bottom, we can attach equipment covered by the agreement, so you might not need this warranty field at the top. The contract period and how to bill sections are very important to how much the customer is charged per billing cycle and when exactly that billing cycle will be. When we apply a total to the service agreement for the contract period, the total amount will be divided up by the length of time the contract lasts and how often you intend to bill the contract. If we take a moment to add a dollar amount for this contract using the item section below, you'll notice that the contract amount and bill amount change based off the amount we added. If we change this contract's how to bill to quarterly, we can see how the bill amount changes. While we're on the subject, we recommend that you create a QuickBooks line item to represent the contract or levels of the contracts. Do not add products or services offered in the contract as we will use a job record in a moment to track the items that are actually used per visit. This is because we want those items to be removed from inventory when we use them, not when the contract is billed. After the contract is set up, we can save and close the service agreement and continue to the job process for service agreements. The job record will track the dates we need to visit the customer and the items we'll use while maintaining this contract. We'll go ahead and create a job record as usual. We will add our job type and description for the preventative maintenance or similar. Since this job will be part of the contract, we have a new option to attach the job to the service agreement here on the right. When attaching the job to the agreement, this box will display the name and type of contracts to help you identify the correct contract for this service. A note for QuickBooks Enterprise and Premier users, you can use the price level function here to automatically discount the items that are covered by the service agreement for this customer. If you head over to QuickBooks, 
enter the lists dropdown and choose the price levels option, you'll see that here we have the ability to set up a price level discount on all or specific items by a percentage or a custom price. This will be especially useful when listing the items and services covered by the contract since we'll be adding those to the job but not charging for them. Using this method will allow items not covered by the contract to be charged at their standard price. If you do not have Enterprise or Premier, when you add items to this job record, make sure to zero out the rates for items which are covered by the contract. This has the advantage of recording the appropriate cost and inventory deduction for the contract, but we'll be billing from the service agreement module later instead of this job. Continue with this as you would any other job. You can check out our preventative maintenance and routing webinar at smartservice.com forward slash webinar for more information on scheduling preventative maintenance services. For the scope of this video, we're going to continue to the billing stage of the service agreement module. To bill for your service agreements, enter the office screen and choose the service agreement option here. Remember, this option may be labeled differently if your company has chose a different terminology for your agreements. Use the date filter at the top to narrow your agreements down to the ones you wish to view. The date filter is especially useful for finding contracts which need to be invoiced, so make sure to take a look at the available options. To the right of the filter options are your preferences for how the invoice will appear in QuickBooks. These options include how the invoice will be sent, the invoice date, and what information will be included on their invoice. Once you're done choosing the options at the top, click the refresh button here to see your results. The contracts displayed below will provide the customer's name, contract name, dates, and the amounts. The buttons on the right of the contract will allow you to post an invoice for this contract to QuickBooks, open the contract to review the information entered, use this contract for a mail merge via Microsoft Word, print a copy of this contract document from Smart Service, and email the customer using the email service agreement template available in the settings menu. You have copies of these same buttons at the bottom of the screen as well, which will apply the selected option to all contracts currently displayed. To finish this video, I'd like to take a quick look at the reporting section in Smart Service. When you purchase the service agreement module, you'll receive a new reporting category specifically for the service agreement contracts. The fields for contracts only appear in this specific type of report, but include all fields available on the service agreement module. Use this feature to report on expired or soon to expire contracts you wish to contact and attempt to renew. You can use these reporting options to see the total value of the contracts or how many of each type you have. If you're new to reporting, we recommend you take a look at our webinar on reporting available at smartservice.com forward slash webinar. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about using the service agreement module, please visit us at smartservice.com forward slash knowledge base. You can also reach our client support specialist at 888-518-0818. We look forward to speaking with you.